Coffee with Crime and Sugar, by Shakespeare, on AO3, Episode 11, Chapter 3. Izuku has been resting his cheek and his hand all day, chasing the warmth of last night. He can't help but think of what he might be doing right now, had yesterday gone differently. Had the elevator not dinged, would Mirasaka have kissed him? Would he have asked him on a date afterwards? Maybe they'd be on the date right now, instead of Izuku soaking up the warmth by the window in the cafe before he has to go into that tiresome job tonight. Another sigh out of him. The cat loafing in his lap is definitely going to be fed up and leave. If the side eye he gets says anything. He just can't help it, though. It's hard to understand why Mirasaka would be interested in Izuku, even though the two of them have only spoke a handful of times. Not to mention the guy is dangerous. He sipped at his coffee while it was still hot, gazing at the window. Perhaps if he and Mirasaka were to get together, Izuku could convince him to pursue a different, less murdery career path. Yeah, right. He almost left at that absurd train of thought. How might that go? Him suggesting Mirasaka hand the gun, or whatever his weapon of choice is, and take up something else like modeling? He has the height and perfect bone structure for it, and Izuku would gladly buy a magazine with him on the cover. Or maybe a centerfold? He takes too many gulps of his coffee, finishing half of it and feeling the hot liquid travel down his throat into his stomach. He shouldn't dwell. He should just go back to people watching. Except, well, that's not so easy when the person who was just on his mind is outside, walking down the street, presumably heading to the apartment building slash cafe. Just Izuku's luck. It's like if he even so much as think of his neighbor, then the man appears. Murasaka is across the street, walking while taking a photo. His eyebrows are pinched together in a displeased way, and it makes Izuku wonder who is on the other end that's making him this sort of face. Could it be another disagreement? Maybe not the one he mentioned before. Maybe a client asking for an impossible kill or something like that? Is there such a thing as a typical refusal of service for contract killers? Izuku wishes he was better at reading lips, watching as his neighbor shakes his head pinching the bridge of his nose before bringing his phone across from his face to hang up the call. His shoulders rise and then fall, the movement rolling of a sigh, no doubt the exasperated kind, as he crosses the street closer to the building now. It's not that many steps until he looks up from his glaze on the ground, signs Izuku rather quickly, and there's a weird satisfaction on Izuku's part when the frustrated look on Mirasakai seems melting away, like marshmallow and cocoa. Well, Izuku doesn't want to be rude. Not when the other has been, overly, kind to him. He can be kind enough to cup Izuku's face again. He gives a slow, casual wave, one that Mirasakai returns. And then, for reasons that only his yearning heart knows, he nods his head over to the empty part of the booth, an invitation. Taken aback a bit, Mirasakai takes him curiosity, like he's giving Izuku time to reconsider. Why would someone reconsider? Doesn't Mirasakai know that he reeks of confidence? But soon, another one of those soft smiles finds itself on his lips before he gives a slight nod, heading over to the entrance. The bell above the door chimes when he steps in, not even bothering to go and order anything first. Just a beeline right to Izuku's cozy corner. Hi. He greets, taking a seat across from Izuku. The air already feels warmer, even in the presence of a cold-blooded killer. Hi. Izuku says back. You have definitely look better. Mirasaki notes, chin propped in his palm. Yesterday, you were red like you were going to run a fever. Izuku was red for reasons that obviously were not fever-related, especially since he faked being sick. He wonders if Mirasaka is going to bring up that almost kiss. Or perhaps try again. Izuku clears his throat, humming out a noise, 
He invited Miyazaki to sit here with him, but he's still a bit un unsure on how to hold a decent conversation when the only things that have been on his mind lately are either not-so-clean thoughts about his neighbor's strong hands and deep voice, or scenarios of severed body parts getting stuffed into freezers. Just terrific. His go-to feelings are scared and horny. And him already. Well, definitely not in a literal sense, even though he's been having nightmares about just that. That looks... better than before? Isika notes, referring to the now less swollen eye. The color has dulled a bit, no longer the warm red and purple bruise it was yesterday when it was fresh. Wow, that sounded convincing. Murasaki laughs. <laughs> well, maybe a bit more ice. Izuku adds, a light chuckle from the taller male, his eyes looking tired. If it weren't for the leaving in the middle of the night to do who knows what, Izuku knows, he would guess that Marisaka may suffer from a sleeping disorder. I hope I'm not getting in your way of people watching, he says. Who says I'm people watching? Murasaki points to Izuku's laptop on the table between them. The screen was dead. Saw it in the window. Izuku pouts and refreshes the monitor, bringing up his unfinished translation work. There was a language there I didn't recognize. Marisaki says, It's French. I do translation work on the side for extra cash. Izuku explains. He hadn't expected his work to get forgotten for people watching, or for the people watching to get forgotten by daydreaming about his tall, handsome, deadly so, Next door neighbor. Ah, French. The language of love. Mirasaka says dreamily, mostly in a teasing way. Say something in French, Midori. He requests. Like what? Isika says, while saving the small chuck of work he managed to get done. Anything. The other answers. Isika has to stop himself from rolling his eyes. For Hitman, Murasaka sure is ridiculous. He closes the document he was on, shutting the laptop. Twisten ton viper, he says, monotone. There's only a few brief moments that he thought of being murdered flashing through his mind, because he just called the other a potato. But that stuffed out immediately as he met with a dreamy sigh. That's so romantic. Murasaka flirts. What's it mean? Izuku almost gives himself away by snorting into his hand. It doesn't translate very well. He giggles. Liar. Murasaki pouts, then directs his attention to the window, his chin still in his palm, the knuckles curled right under his lip. I like people watching too, by the way. Oh. Watching for potential clients, targets, law enforcement. Yeah, voicing over them. Makes for a good laugh. Murasaki comments, another snort, later this time. That's not really the kind of people watching that I do. Enlighten me on what kind you do, then. Ahem, Izuku turns his head to the window, allowing his chin to rest in his palm, as well. I like to try and guess what people's quirks are as they go by. He says softly, there's no sound that follows after he says it. Not even a hum. And that's a bit peculiar. But not as peculiar as the sight that he catches when he sneaks a glance at the other. Mirasaka is holding a bit rugged. His bruise a great contrast against his now stark skin. It's a complete justification to how he was a moment ago teasing Zugu and requesting he speaks French for him. Is he sick or something? Izuku was just lying yesterday about him catching a sickness, so what's going on? Are you alright? He asks. Maybe if he wasn't looking like he's seen a ghost, the bob of Mirasaki's Adam's apple when he gulps would make Izuku feel hot under his clothes. Yeah, I'm alright. He answers quietly before directing his gaze to the hustle bustle outside the cafe. Or maybe just anywhere that isn't Izuku. Strange, considering that Mirasaki has been giving him buttloads of attention. 
Was it something Izuku said? Sounds like an interesting game. Mirasaki murmurs, though the emotion in the words can't be pinpointed. His eyebrows scrunch before he nods his head to something outside. That one, the woman with braided hair. Izuku follows the other gaze, following a regular that walks by often. Color changing nails. He says, assuming that's what Mirasaki had asked, for him to guess her quirk, that is. It had taken him a few weeks to figure that one out, seeing as how it was very subtle. He watches Mirasaki watch the woman, eyes focus. He turns his head too, just as her hand goes up for her purse. Her fingers tip go into silver and come out hot pink. Lucky guess, Mirasaki says. More of a regular observation than a guess? Izuka corrects. The other man hums, then nods. Do that one with the red shoes. Izuka hears the word red shoes, and he already has more than an inkling on what he'll find when he turns his head. A teen boy he'd never seen, with chunky red sneakers, just like his own. Warily walking down the street, donning a posture that invites abuse, but also tries to hide away from it and become invisible. Maybe Izuku is hitting a bit too close to home, but then again, that's just how it is for people like him. He's quirkless, Izuku says, quiet and tense. And when he peers at the man sitting across from him, his heart sinks. There's a frown on Mirasaki. Expected, but still disappointing. I think you might be right. He says then, and Izuku's heart buries itself deeper. Does he... Does he know to look at the shoes? Does he know they're a mark? A target for something? Does he know that Izuku is... He has a wary way of existing. Marisake goes on, like he's trying not to take up space despite there being plenty of it. His eyebrows are still furrowed. It's hardly fair, the way people with unsightly quirks, and not at all, have to live looking over their shoulder. Unsightly? Izuku repeats in a whisper. He's not quite sure what to make the look the other gives him, like he's waiting for something horrible to happen. Unslightly as in bad. If that's what you mean, I don't think there's such thing as a bad quirk. Izuku wants to chew on his own lip, but he doesn't. He doesn't really get to say this stuff often, and Mirasaki seems to be an adamant listener at the moment. They're like tools. It goes on. You either have one or you don't. And if you don't, you learn to use whatever's around you. Like analysts learning, a new language, getting ahead of a while, knowing that you won't be cheered on, even if you should be. A quirk doesn't make a person or define them. Izuku has always believed that, no matter how often the world tried to beat it out of him. When there's no immediate response, Izuku slowly looks up from where his eyes had fallen, to a half-drunk cup of coffee, probably cold by now. Something that he does not expect to find is surprise on Mirasaki's face. Though, one thing is for sure. Instead of sudden displeasure on Izuku's view, the surprise morphs into something so soft, so open, and, dare he say, loving? I couldn't disagree more. Mirasaki breathes out, as if Izuku had just handed him the moon. And even though Izuku has been on panic mode for days, he can't help it when his shoulders relax. Things can stay fine for right now, and he'd be happy. Alright, okay, so this scene, the people watching scene, is the exact, well not the exact same, I don't think the beginning of it was the same, but um, the people watching scene and the talking, the, the, the lady with the changing nails, and the quirkless kid, those are the almost the exact same, right? Um, there's obviously, I think, a little tid points here and there that change ever so slightly. But um, this is so interesting. Dude, this is making me want to write <laughs> like an AU of the AU. Like, okay, what if Izuku was the writer and Hitoshi was the pro hero? Or, or something like that, you know? Like, change it up a bit. Make it interesting, you know? Um... Or, you know, you know, I, I just want to switch it up a little bit. But, um, no, yeah, I'm probably not going to do that because I have so many goddamn writing, uh, writing, uh, 
projects that I need to fucking finish. Uh, but it's my, it might go on the list. It's gonna be at the very bottom, but um, come back in five years. <laughs> But uh, it's really interesting and I really like it so far. I'm really enjoying this fanfiction so far. Thank you, Spooksphere, for allowing me to, one, podfic this, and two, for making this. Because, you know, making it and posting it. Because, again, as I said, I really like the original and being able to experience this for the second time, kind of like, being able to experience this for the first time a second time is really just something wonderful that I am enjoying so fucking much. I really, really like this. I I appreciate it so much. Like, I don't think you understand how much I fucking appreciate it. But I, I do. I very much appreciate it. It is, it is wonderful and marvelous how much uh, you would... Like, I mean, tell me, people. I'm going to ask a question to you. What is a fanfiction that you would want and desire, right, to re-experience it for the first time? For the very first time. Because I know there's shows out there. Like for me, a movie that I would love to experience for the first time again would definitely have to be um, either the How to Train Your Dragon series or La La Land. Those two are like my favorites, right? Um, if anybody asks like what my favorite movie is, it's going to have to be a tie between La La Land and How to Train Your Dragon, right? It depends on what I'm feeling. If I'm feeling, you know, nostalgic, then How to Train Your Dragon. Right? If I'm feeling, you know, theater, <laughs> La La Land. Because I really, really love La La Land and, and the way it's constructed. Uh, but those are my two favorite movies. Right? La La Land and How to Train Your Dragon. I would do anything to experience those movies for the first time again. Specifically, I think La La Land is the one that I would love to experience for the first time again. I think my biggest thing... Like, don't get me wrong, How to Train Your Dragons is a really good movie. But I think for me, what I love it the most now... Uh, as an adult is obviously it's really good with its um sound production and uh overall animation and story and stuff like that but i think what i love the most now out of it is the nostalgia i get out of it and i understand that do not get me wrong how to change a dragon is good on itself it does not need nostalgia for it to be good but what i enjoy so much about it is the nostalgia because i grew up on that series i grew up Side and side with Hiccup. Obviously not side and side because I'm barely turning 20 and Hiccup's already 20 and he turned 20 when I was turning 15. But point taken is, we were growing side and side. He was growing up, I was growing up. And it was like a really cool experience. I think I saw the third movie in theaters. I sobbed my fucking ass off, by the way. But um, La La Land is another one that I would love to experience for the first time again. It was a movie that it was in uh, introduced to me by one of my exes, uh, my second love. And I would love to rewatch it again. Not with them. They could fuck off. I would love to. <laughs> I would love to just rewatch it by myself for the first time again because it's such an interesting movie. And am I gonna sob? Yes. <laughs> Coincidentally, both of these movies made me sob the first time I watched them. Or another one that I would love to experience for the first time again would be Your Name. That's another one that um, obviously it's not one of my favorites anymore, but it's on those top. It's on the top five. <laughs> it's on those top boards, right? It's in, it's in the leaderboard, right? Your Name. It used to be my favorite before La La Land came around. And Your Name is one that I would definitely love to experience for the first time again. Although with that one, I got to experience it for the first time like three times. Or not for the first time, but uh, like for example, this one. It's not for the first time that I'm experiencing this, but it feels as though it's the first time because there's new things. With Your Name, um, because it's packed up with so many different things and I watched it at such a young age um the first time I watched it I didn't captivate everything that was going on and happening the second time I watched it I realized another thing and the third time I watched it I realized more um obviously now I watch it and like I've realized all the little bits and moments so it's not like oh my god you know same with La La Land there's small little tidbits it's not that much it's small little things like color and stuff like that but um yeah those are the movies that I would like to you know see for the first time again experience it for the first time again which would be la la land as for shows it's either has it's literally a tie between arcane and um love and trouble which is a k-drama arcane or love and trouble if i'm being honest with you i'm leaning more towards arcane I am leaning more towards Arcane because I would love to experience that shit for the first time. As for books, I would love to experience Heartstopper for the first time again. Um, and then as for fan fictions, I think 
A fanfic that I would love to experience for the first time again will definitely have to be one of my bookmarks. And I think it's gonna have to definitely be, I think it was a Shindeku fic that I wrote, uh, not that I wrote, that I read um, here. One that I would have to definitely experience for the first time again. Um, it's gonna literally be a tie between Deku, I think he's some pro, by Clouds, Behind the Clouds Not Coming Down. Um, I listened to the podfic that, um, Mika made of that one. And then, uh, I would definitely love to experience at odds and ends for the first time again as well. Um, there's a lot of fan fictions that I would love to experience for the first time again. Uh, another one that I would just love to just experience for the first time would definitely have to be finding, uh, no, not finding family. Or, uh, what's it called? Um, the way you used to do, although if I'm being honest, it's such a long one that if I were to reread it, it would be as if I was experiencing it again. But, um, specifically I think the series that will have to definitely win is the Someone series, the Someone Better and Somewhere Better. Uh, those are definitely ones that I would love to experience for the first time again because they're so fucking, what's it called? They're so jam-packed. They're so really good. I think another one would definitely be um, Black Keys Make Music 2 by Rome Berry, which is a um, present mic fan fiction with a little bit of a, uh, with past Eraser, uh, Eraser Obero. Uh, it was a really good read. I read it a couple months ago. It was a really good read. It was a really good read. There are certain ones that are like really good reads that I wish I could read them for the first time again. Um, ooh, Just a Concerned Citizen is a really good one too. Just a Concerned Citizen. I would definitely love to experience the cute guy next door, my be a villain for the first time again. I'm technically kind of experiencing it for the first time again right now, but um, those are, those are the ones that I would love to experience for the first time. Swallowing the stars. I don't remember this one. Oh, yeah. Cat pod fic that one. I remember it now. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely some that I would like. Oh, Hook, Like, and Sinker is a really good one, too. It's explicit and it's Eraser Mike, but like shit is good. Hook, Like, and Sinker, dude. I think when it comes to overall writers, I think my favorite overall writer has to be... Um, Clouds, my head in the clouds not coming down. They do really good long series that I really enjoy and there's multiple of their stuff that I enjoy and I'm still waiting for them to come back from hiatus. Um, and then for um, Ochako and Uderaka fix, I really, really love It's Under Slash Kingston. And then for Eraser Mike fix, my two go-to is Kira Kira. I love Kira Kira. That is my go-to. Those are my three fan fiction um, people that I like to live, like authors, right? Those are the three that I know by name. Kira Kira, It's Under Slash Kingston, and Clouds, My Hand in the Clouds Not Coming Down. One of those are infamous, right? Clouds, My Hand in the Clouds Not Coming Down. They're infamous. They're literally, I think it's a staple for podfickers to podfic one of their series. Like there's so many versions of their podfix that I'm so like, you know, I'm excited to do, um, uh, what's it called? The revamp of um, Cheat Code Sports Strategist by Clouds. My head the clouds not coming down. Um, I'm also might uh, ask to do Deku, I think in some pro, but uh, some other series, even if, you know, people have already pod it or anything like that, I would love to continue that and, and, and do it again um, so that I could then get to the point where I would revamp it. <laughs> Revamps are going to be a lot faster. So even though I'm only going to be posting it once a week, it's not going to be where it's like you take years for me to finish that like 100, 200 chapters. I'm going to make revamps long. I'm going to make revamps long. All right. At the very least, each revamp is going to be 30 minutes at the least. That is my mark. 30 minutes at the least. Um, obviously, there's some that are going to be longer. There's something going to be shorter and stuff like that. It depends on what my schedule allows me now that I am more free with my time. I am, now that I'm jobless, I, <laughs> I'm not jobless, YouTube is my job still. But now that I'm kind of doing YouTube full time till I could get another job, um, I'm gonna be able to put a lot more effort and time into it. And the job that I look for, it's gonna be a part time so that I don't have to like, you know, split up and stuff like that. I'll still have an income and stuff like that, but I'll also have time for you guys. Anyways, as always, Marion Jobs, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.